Hello everyone, welcome to day 16 of the Saturday challenge of learning Tableau from scratch and in today's video we are going to talk and create about conditional formatting in Tableau which is very important. So often in real time there might be multiple scenarios where we will be creating this cross tabs and we will try to use conditional formatting on that to make uh, the information more clear so without wasting much time let us get started and if you're new to my channel don't forget to like share and subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment so what i'm doing is i'm trying to create a standard cross tab here so what i'm doing is i'm taking uh, maybe region i'll take okay and i am going to add uh, order date for that in the columns now for each region for uh, different years what is the sales okay so i'm going to take instead of sales i'm going to take profit here as my measure so these are the values we got fine so i'm not saying anything negative here but i wanted negative so what we'll do is instead of region we'll try to do it at a subcategory level and see if we get that so here if you observe we have got positive values and negative values Okay, now my first thing is I want to add borders to this. Okay, so formatting is very important in Tableau because a lot of times you will be spending, you know, a lot of uh, your time in formatting the report. Okay, so I'm going to format option here. Like I said, we have five important options here font alignment shading borders and lines so using this you can control you know how you want your dashboard to be how you want your charts to be and how you want your font color and alignment to be so for now because i want to add borders i'm just going to borders so here like say every formatting option you take it will be at three levels sheet level row level and column level now i'm going to sheet level and i'm trying to add cell uh, i mean border to each of the cell here so i'm clicking on this and i'm adding black so we got this i'm going to add it pain level also okay and header level also now my expectation from you guys is you know you should be very clear where it will impact if i'm making a change at sheet level row level column level or total level or what is this row divider and all Okay, so the more you practice, uh, you'll get a better clarity on what are the options here. So what I'm doing is now I'm also adding row divider here. You see here, it has, this is your row divider here and at the bottom here. Okay, so I'm just making it black. So now we got, again, I'm going to shading option here. So if you see, we have row banding here every alternate cell has one color okay so i i'm not sure if it is visible in the screen but just to make it clear i'm just trying to have a different color so this is your row banding here so some customers request that you know they want a, a row banding to be available and some don't so if i'm making a change here it will look like this so if your intention is to add this you can use row banding for your convenience if not you can ignore it so i don't need maybe we will remove that so i'm just making it none here okay now there is no uh no, what do you call no row banding for this so now what i'm doing is i'm trying to add a category also to the view so that i can use uh the concept of totals here now we have one line here which is not colored i want to color that if you see here next to subcategory and at the end so again format option borders so rows everything is colored here but if i go to columns the column divider is not colored here that is making the difference see i want that to be black color now we got it okay so if you want to change the font color and have a proper black color maybe we can do that now this is a better dark color if you want to change it and have a different color that also you can do like say i want blue color you can do it like this or any other color that you need or you feel you want that in the view you can do that okay so i'm going with the standard color of black and we'll try to put it that way okay now i want to add totals for each of my category item here this is very important concept okay so i'm going to analysis here 
okay analysis tab maybe first time we are clicking on this and we have different marks here okay i'm going to totals here so under this we have show row grand total column grand total and also first let us see these two i'm clicking on show row grand total now what happened it has created an extra column on the right side here which is giving us the total value for each furniture item under subcategory called bookcases how much of sales we had in each year so like you say bookcases if you observe every year it is giving us loss only except in 2021 all other years were loss making business for year for us same like chairs if you observe every year it is giving us good returns so which means people are continuously or consistently buying these chairs where are bookcases there is you know, not much demand in the market or maybe the price is high, higher so customers are not interested in that so it is a loss making business for us so we are not making anything out of that so again furnishing how is it working for us tables is again a loss making business for us you see all negative values in each year no business will think okay like whether they they want to continue uh, this type of uh, loss making business or they can you know remove it from their inventory and all so that is uh, the decisions they, they can take so this is your column likewise i'm trying to add my row so this is sorry this is column and this is row now here we got total this is total of your all category items under subcategory items for each year this is 49,000, 61,000, 81,000 and like this. Now based on how you want in the view, you can try to add whether at a row level or at a column level. Option is up to you. But we have the convenience of both. Now some customers might want this totals to be in the beginning rather than at the end. That also we have the option. We can go to totals and here we have row totals to left. Now when I move that, you know, first total is getting created. And then we have the list of sales for each year. Likewise, I can boom my column grand total to the top as well. Analysis, totals, columns on top. So we got that also on top. Okay. So again, up to you how you want. But remember how we can customize the totals here. But now my intention is for every category item, I want a total here. Like say all of this, when I merge, I want a so subtotal for that so i'm going here analysis again totals i'm clicking on add all subtotals now see here for your bookcases we have total here again office supplies we have total here like that now because i don't now i don't need this grand totals i'm trying to remove that okay and i'll just uncheck that totals and column grand total now for every Category item, we got a total. Okay, you can use it that way. Now I want to color only this total part, not anything else. That is one way of formatting your cross tabs. Okay. So I'm going to format option. Again, under that, I'm going to shading option. Now see here, we have an option called as grand total. So if I try to color that, Maybe it uh, sheet level. I'm I'm trying to do it sheet level. Okay, and I'm trying to do at uh, so we got at all the levels, and I'm trying to do it at uh, yeah totals and grand totals we have okay now it colored only the total part of our cross tab report so this way also you can you know create your cross tab report i think this was asked many times in the interview how will you color only the total part of uh, cross tab report okay now what i'm doing is maybe i want to introduce some conditional formatting to this and based on condition, I want this to be colored. So this can be done in three ways. That is conditional formatting cell, conditional formatting label, and we'll try to add some KPIs to that. Okay, so three methods we are going to see. So for that, first what I'm doing is I'm trying to add a simple calculation or create a simple calculation. And I'll, I'll call it as profit. Uh, 
or loss okay and sum of profit is greater than zero simple okay i'm writing a very basic calculation okay so now what will happen for every profit that is there in each cell it is going to check if it is greater than zero or not if it is greater than zero it will return true if it is less than zero it will return false so that is why you see it is trying to create a boolean data type true or false which means at any given point of time you it will be either true or false but not other than that you won't see anything here so now what i'm doing is i'm trying to take this and drop it on color shelf now what happened all of your values which are true are in one color all of your values which are less than zero are in one color so again you can customize your colors okay so true i need green values maybe false i'll just uh, gray it out okay now here we are highlighting only true values or maybe uh, i'll add it something like this for true we'll go to this and maybe a darker color so whatever you, we need we can do that this way we can create our cost trap report so this is your conditional formatting cell okay you are highlighting the cell here now i don't want that to do i want the background of this particular cell to be colored okay so maybe we can increase the size also here if the font is not visible to you okay and maybe we can make this also as bold so that we can see clearly okay this is how it is looking okay <clears throat> now i'm duplicating this and we'll talk about this is conditional format cell sorry this is the label now we are going to use conditional format cell okay so for that what i'm doing is i'm trying to remove this okay and uh, now what i'm doing is i'm just using a dummy thing here so for that i'm just converting this into uh, maybe gaunt bar or something like that and i'm going to write just add two inverted commas here both in rows and cell uh, rows and columns and now i'm just going to take this and add it here and now i'm going to increase the cell size here okay so this maybe here yeah now see here it is your conditional formatting cell so maybe now if at all you want to color your cell green or uh, true i want green false i will just highlight so this is your conditional formatting cell suppose you don't need this inverted commas so this i have added as a dummy field because i don't want my colors to be beyond this particular size so if you see observe here i am trying to remove that now observe the cell size it is going beyond this specific range of that particular cell so to avoid that to fix it to a particular thing we can use this and if suppose you don't need that in the view you can simply click on this and uncheck show header that is gone from the view same for column also now even though you are using this in the view you're not displaying in the chart that way also you can customize here okay so this is your other method of formatting now i want to add kpi indicators okay and uh, for that what we can do is again i'm just trying to duplicate this okay and this time again i'm removing this i'm going to change it to shapes here and i'm going to add true or false to shape now see here it has created two shapes one is for your true and another one is for false maybe you can adjust it 
and give whatever the true I want. I'll use filled shapes here or arrows I will use. So true, I need up arrow and false, I will, I need down arrow, apply. Okay. Okay. So this is how you can format it and you can use, maybe just you need to adjust the view here. It will automatically come. Okay. So this is your KPIs on the value. So three formatting options we have seen here, which are very important in terms of real time also. Okay. So conditional formatting label, conditional formatting cell and using KPIs here. Okay. So I hope you have, that's it from my side for today. I hope you have found today's video interesting. If it does, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and have a good day.